Why does Buddhism and science only meet to a certain degree? Well, I think I have the answer for you in this book here, Meditations on Living, Dying and Loss by Assorted. Welcome, mere mortals, to another book review. And why is it assorted? Well, this actually had a bunch of different people working together on, on this one book. So uh, I'll explain a little bit more about that in a minute. Why did I read this book? Well, I'm gradually working my way towards a reading of the full original text or as much of it as I can handle. Uh, this is part of my sort of long-term yearly goals. And so uh, I've been reading a bunch of books, working my way to having more of the text in it. So I first started with Why Buddhism is True by Robert Wright. Then I worked on to Three Steps to Awakening, which is sort of about a bit meditation in a Buddhist context. Then an introduction to Buddhism by the Dalai Lama, which had some particular aspects, some parts of the text um, of different places in. And then this one is a, a, a larger portion of the text. So I'm gradually working my way into it. Now, this book is a, a bit of a weird one. So originally, it's basically based on the Tibetan book of the dead. So that was first translated in 1927 and was, I guess, like a seminal work of the time of, of introducing Buddhism to the West, to the English-speaking countries. It was then uh, retranslated by actually one of the, I think the, the editor of this, Graham Coleman, as well as um, another person, who did I mention? Guya, uh, there's a guy called Guya Do, Guya Doge, Guya Doge, something like that, who helped with the translation of this. And then in 2008, they've created this book, which was edited by Graham and Coleman uh, and my man Thupten Jimpa, yeah, yeah, uh, as well as the Dalai Lama himself. So this book has, uh, I guess it begins with a bit of a history of the Tibetan Book of the Dead, as well as some introductions from the editor, as well as from the Dalai Lama. The main point of the book is to have sections of the actual Tibetan Book of the Dead, um, with a little bit of a preface from the author, from the translator. So it's very short. It's only 115 pages. You can read it quite quickly. Uh, and each section has a preface on why this part of the text was chosen. So I'll read out a list of some of the chapter titles so you can get a feel for what they're about. There's Song of Impermanence, Imprisoned by the Ego, A Lament, Living, Dreaming, Meditating and Dying, Wisdom, Elements and Subtle Energies, Entering the Horizon of Light, Transforming Bereavement in the Mirror of Guidance. So that wasn't all of them. That was just a couple of them. And this is basically a book, yeah, where it's it's just taking large points, parts of the text and is trying to introduce you to them and what, what you should maybe get out of them. So much like my other book reviews, sort of around this theme i'm not going to talk about the themes because the theme is buddhism and i guess meditations on living dying and loss but yeah i, I didn't get that much out from it so I'll, I'll say more from the insights that i gained from this book and i suppose the main insight was the big picture why buddhism is true so there's a lot of things i, I actually take from buddhism um now that i've read some of these books now that i've researched it more which i'm finding quite useful so the liberation of others, which is focusing more upon others than on yourself as sort of like a default pattern. Um, karma and dependent origination. So always talking about how one cause has a is rooted in a an action from the past and it's sort of a linking chain that always goes forward. The impermanence of the body the and, and mind and how everything's always changing. And there's even some sort of categorical stuff. So like the three categories of suffering the 10 types of non-virtuous actions. When you read them out, you're like, yeah, okay, this is pretty good. I can I can get on board with this. Um, and I, I would say probably all major religions are like this where if you just take out, you know, the principal concepts, you go, yeah, you know what? I think that's probably useful advice for living in the world. So it's not exclusive just to Buddhism. Uh, this gets onto the, the second insight, I suppose, which was the small details, why Buddhism probably isn't true. And... I knew this was coming up um, as I was getting closer and closer to the original text, which is there are so many stories and assertions that are non-falsifiable. So they're talking about the process of rebirth, for example, what what happens in rebirth and for a large section, I just want to read out one of the parts uh, which says what will happen to you when you're in this period between dying in the real world in the here and now and then being reborn again into another womb and your consciousness transfer over uh, and so what's going to happen to you well this is one of the things so 
Um, your attempts at deceit will be of no use. Tying a rope around your neck, Yama will drag you forward. He will sever your head at the neck, extract your heart, pull out your entrails, lick your bones, lick your brains, drink your blood, eat your flesh, and suck your bones. Despite this, you will not die. Even as your body is repeatedly cut into pieces, it will be continuously revived. Uh, in experiencing being cut into pieces it, uh, in this way, time after time, will cause enormous suffering. Eesh. So there's quite a few things about this of uh, Yama's torture of the rebirth process, which there was a lot of talk about the womb entrances and obstruction of the room of the womb. So, you know, people were meditating in prayer over your dead body for, I think it was 43 days. They could obstruct the wombs of bad places. So they would, um, it would stop you from your consciousness of being reborn into a cat or one of the devils or ogres or carnivorous ogres or whatever. Um, and there was just some, I've got a couple of extras here. I'll, I'll just read them out. So, um, whatever you, one says to the deceased is heard by the deceased. All the sensory faculties will be complete in the, once you've actually died. Uh, and the deceased is continuously being overwhelmed by fear and terror. There is an undistracted, uh, concentration on what to do. There was just so many things where I just went, I, how can you expect me to believe this? Like I need some evidence. I need, I need something here, people. And, um, you know, maybe it's because I'm cherry picking and I'm only picking out the crazy stuff from, from this or what appears crazy to me. But, you know, the point is this book was cherry picked in itself to be a, uh, I, I suppose like a, a point of Buddhism, like what is the point of Buddhism? And when you get into the original texts, it just starts to become so, I'm just going to say it like bullshit. Like I, I can't see why this is any more true than say some of the assertions of Christianity, some of the assertions of the Muslim or Hindu or whatever it is, um, like how, how can you know that Yama is going to torture you like this? Uh, I'm, it, this is where it loses me um, and I've, I've been lost. So um, my, my own observations from the book, uh, I'm learning plenty from, from this sort of process of going down the path of Buddhism, but as a whole, I'm, I, I'm definitely pushing it away. It's, I find there's interesting things to take note of. There's some interesting concepts, but as a whole, as the jam-packed religion, um, I just can't get on board with it. It's it's too far. It's a step too far. Uh, poetically as well, it didn't stand out. You know, a lot of people talk about you know these texts having this beauty to them, but the pages that I read, I felt were just just sort of rubbish when in a, in a sort of beauty sense. Um, maybe because in the original language, it it does have a a much more flow or something like that. Yeah, I could potentially b believe that. Uh, but I'm reading a book by John Keats at the moment and when I compare it to that, it's just like, ugh, this is, uh, this is, yeah, poetry is not my forte, uh, anyway, but reading it compared to the real poetry, I, I guess is, um, uh, it doesn't, it doesn't stand out. So in summary, uh, I found this book eminently forgettable, uh, as, as a whole, there was bits and pieces here, which were useful, but, um, m yeah, most of the prefaces I would say were actually useful, uh, but but on their own, the passages of text are just unclear and vague, and they're just they don't they don't uh, they don't help at all for me. Uh, there's a lot of repetition, um, and maybe you just require the whole framework. So you require the chanting, the clothes, the incense, the culture, the buildings, the the people, all of that that you sort of get in the the Asian countries where Buddhism is a huge thing. Uh, maybe you need all of that to fully make sense of some of these really obscure passage, uh, passages in the book. Not that these are even obscure. You know, these are, this is like a condensed version, so these should be the most important passages. Um, yeah, just not not a great book for me. So I'm giving it a three and a half out of ten. That's probably one of my lowest ratings. Um, it's just I, I'm glad it was a short book because I'm not sure I could have really read that much more of it. What's something pragmatic I'm going to take from it? Well, I think I need to prepare myself for some potentially boring reading. Um, like I've said, I do, I do want to give it another try. I do want to try and not be too judgmental until I've you know actually had a stab at reading the full text on their own and coming to my own conclusions from it. But 
uh, yeah, I think I need to prepare myself for some some potentially boring reading uh, or unpleasant reading while I'm just trying to make sense of things that don't make sense. So what are your thoughts on, on Buddhism? Do you, are you similar to me where you think there's very good aspects of it and then other aspects which are just uh, a little bit too woo-woo-y, woo-woo-y, a little bit too far out of the realms of um, the, the here and now, I suppose, in, in our context of the, what are we in, 2021? Um, yeah, would love, love to know your thoughts. Other than that, I hope you're having a fantastic day wherever you are in the world. And that's it. Karen out.